Are you using Thrive Automator yet? If not, you'll definitely want to check it out. With the new features in Thrive Automator, you'll be able to sell your online course using payment tools such as Digistore24, PayPal, or Stripe, and you can use the information from that sale to personalize your student's Thrive Apprentice experience because you can now make use of the first and last name values. Another new feature is that you can now use visitor responses to form custom fields inside of Thrive Automator, which means you can now trigger actions based on specific responses. And the third feature we're going to go over is you can now update custom fields in your email autoresponder based on a customer's actions on your website. This is super helpful if you're using your email service as a CRM. So we're going to dive into these three new features coming right up. I'm Christine with Thrive Beans. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, here is your invitation to do so. And if you ring the bell, you'll be notified when we publish new videos. So Thrive Automator is our plugin for building workflows that pass data between different apps, plugins, and services. So if you've ever thought to yourself, I wish that when someone buys my online course, they would be tagged in my email list, or I wish when someone finishes a lesson in a course, that would trigger an email autoresponder, Rather than using a pricey CRM or taking hours to do these things manually or maybe just not doing them at all, know that you can easily set up these automations in Thrive Automator, along with hundreds of other automations. And the latest Thrive Automator update lets you do even more. So we are going to be talking about dynamic first and last names in the registration action, form custom fields, and custom field mapping for email autoresponders. Let's start with dynamic first and last names in the registration action. What this allows you to do is read the first and last name from an incoming webhook. Incoming webhooks receive data from other tools and software, and they're useful because you can use them to trigger events on your website. So for example, incoming webhooks allow you to use a checkout tool of your choice, such as Stripe, PayPal, or Digistore24, and then you can give access to an online course. We do have a video on ways to use incoming webhooks, which we will link for you. Now what the dynamic first and last name feature does for you is now you can read the first and last name in the incoming webhook, and you can do things like dynamically display a customer's name on the courses page, or you can display their name next to the profile image in the header. So let's see how this works in Thrive Automator. So this is the automation that I've got set up in Thrive Automator, and we're going to go through it step by step. The scenario is that I've got a product that I've created in Thrive Apprentice called Affiliate Nation, and I'm taking payment using Digistore24. With this automation, as soon as someone pays, a WordPress account will be created on my website, and then they'll get access to Affiliate Nation. So the trigger is going to be an incoming webhook, and what's important is that under incoming data, you'll need to make sure that you're collecting the right data. So these fields here are for the email address, the first name and last name of your customer, and the product ID. Now to get these fields into Thrive Automator, you will need to set up a webhook with your third-party software first. You'll need to test the connection and you'll need to have Thrive Automator listen for this data. This is a bit of a process and we do have detailed tutorials on how to set up incoming webhooks with various payment tools such as Digistore24 and Stripe. So for the email field, that has been mapped to email and first name, last name, and product ID are all coming in as text. All right, so we are finished with this step and let's click done and move on to the next one. The next step is adding a filter so that this automation will only run for a specific product. To add a new step to your automation, you can simply click the plus sign then you have a variety of actions to choose from here. You can also use the search bar to search for actions. So let's take a look at the filter step. You can see that the product ID equals a very specific product ID number. And this ID number is from Digistore24. So let's hop over there. And right now I'm on the products page and you can see that this product right here has a very specific product ID number. So you can simply copy this number here, go back to Thrive Automator and paste it in. So with that, we are done with this step. And the next step is to find or create a user. 
In this step, we'll need to see if the user exists, meaning whether they are registered on our website. So the action that I've selected is find or create user. And if the email address is found on our website, all is well, we will not be writing any new data to the user. If the email address does not exist on our website, then a new user will be created. Now, when this step is added to your automation, these fields will be blank. So you'll need to assign values to these fields. So for first name, let's click on the dynamic button. Let's go to webhook data and I've selected first name. And then for the last name field, I've done the same. I've gone to the dynamic data button, go to webhook data, and then I've selected last name. And then for the user role, we do want to add them as a subscriber. So we are finished with this step and let's click done. Okay, so for the last step in our automation, we are granting access to a product and all I've done here is I've selected the product that I want to give access to. And with that, we are done with this automation. So with this automation in place, you now have the first name and the last name of your new customer associated with their WordPress account. So now you can create a personalized experience on your site. On your courses page, you can say, hi, John, here are your courses and memberships. In the header, you can display the person's name next to their profile picture. So you can really make the entire customer experience super polished and professional. Really quickly, I'll show you how to do that. All right, so I've got my My Courses page here open in Thrive Architect. Let's add a text element to this page. And I'll say, hi. Then I'll go to the dynamic button, which looks like a stack of coins. Under dynamic text, I'll select a source, which is going to be user data. And then in the second dropdown, I'll select WordPress user first name. The default value, I'll just say there so that in case someone's first name isn't in the database, it'll just say hi there. Then I'll click insert. And then I'll finish typing the rest of this line. And that's it, it's just that easy. So you can do this exact same thing for the header or anywhere else you want to insert the first or last name of your student. Next, let's go over form custom fields. What this does is when someone submits a form on your website, the information they provide via that form is now available inside of Thrive Automator so that you can now filter based on those responses. And also third-party plugins can use it to trigger actions. So you could pass form values to a customer relationship management tool, a calendar tool or Zapier, and then you would set that up downstream in your Thrive Automator workflow. So let me show you exactly how this works. Here I've got a custom form and I've created this using the custom form element. I selected one of the templates and then I customized it by moving some of the fields around and changing the field labels. Now there's two important things. Number one is you'll need to make sure that these form fields are named appropriately and that you are familiar with them. As you can see, I'm asking for a name and an email. I'm also asking how many employees do you have and that field is named employees. I'm also asking what industry does your business serve? And that field is named industry. And I've also got a field here for a message. The second important thing is that under advanced, you wanna make sure that you have a form identifier and you wanna make sure that you're familiar with it. This is a unique name that identifies this specific form. All right, so now let's hop back over to Thrive Automator. All right, so here we are in Thrive Automator and I've started a new automation. For the trigger, that is going to be the form being submitted. So let's search for form submit. And to select the form, we are going to use the form identifier. Now let's say the goal of your automation is to send form values to a third party tool. We'll need to send a webhook. So let's go ahead and add another action. Then let's click send webhook. Now let's go down to fields. And if we click the button to insert dynamic data, if we go to form data, you'll see that you now have the option to select email name. And if we scroll down, we have employees and industry. So now whatever the user answered for any of those form fields, those answers can be passed along to your CRM, Zapier, etc. So that's one way to use this feature. 
Another use for form custom fields is triggering actions based on specific responses to your form questions. So let's remove this step. And instead, let's add a filter. So let's say you want an action to happen only if the person is a solopreneur. So we will say that we want their answer to the employee's question to be just me. So let's go ahead and go to employees. Let's select equals. And then in this field here, we'll type just me and we'll click done. Okay, so we've selected just the solopreneurs and now you can choose whatever action you like. So let's say you want to give solopreneurs access to a free online course on solopreneurship. You can proceed with giving them access to your course. Again, the ability to take people's answers from a form and have an action based on a specific response is pretty huge because there's tons of actions to choose from in Thrive Automator. Simply go through this list and select the one you need. Next, custom field mapping for email autoresponders. With this feature, you can update custom fields in your autoresponder based on triggers on your website. This is really useful if you're using your email tool for storing individual user data as if it was a CRM. So let me show you how this works. We'll start by submitting a form and to select the form, we're going to use the form identifier. We're going to use the same form as the last example. So we're done with this step. Next, we'll need to add the user to our email autoresponder. So let's go ahead and click add another action and let's search for add user in autoresponder. Let's choose my autoresponder and I'll select a list. Now the email field is required for this automation, but you might also want to pass other information about your email subscriber as well, such as their name, phone number, or custom fields. And so that is why we have the field mapping section here. Now, in order to gather custom field information from your form and send it to your email service, your email service has to have some place to put that information. So you'll need to go into your email service and create custom fields ahead of time. All right, so let's go ahead and let's select a key. And you can see that I have four fields here. I've got industry and employees, which I actually created manually in my active campaign account. So you will need to go ahead and do that beforehand. After that, you can come back here and click the refresh button, and then they will show up here in this list. All right, so now I can map my active campaign fields to the correct fields on my form. So I'll go ahead and select industry here. Then on the right, I'll select insert dynamic data. Then I'll go to the form data and I'll select industry. Then I'll do the exact same thing for the employees field. All right, so that's pretty much it. That's how you can update information about an individual user in your email autoresponder using custom form fields. Now, how can you really use this feature? Because you can actually already pass custom field information to an email service by using the lead generation form in Thrive Architect. Well, if you use Thrive Automator to pass information along instead, you can actually do a lot more. So for example, you might want a custom field that stores a last logged in date. So when the user logs in, you can update your email service with the date that the person last logged in. This feature is super handy if you want to use your email service as a CRM, but without the hefty price tag of a tool like Keep or Entreport. All right, so what do you think of the new features in Thrive Automator? Which ones will you be using on your website? Let us know down in the comments. You can get Thrive Automator and the rest of our tools when you purchase Thrive Suite. Click the link in the description to learn more. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.